All right, it looks as if it is four o'clock. We will call the uh, March 22nd Architecture Review Board to order. Uh, Steve, if you could please run us through the roll call. Joe Clark. Present. Marcus Sabaglio. Present. Jerry Jones. Present. Richard Lindy. Present. Pam Langen was uh, excused. Robert Heimerl was excused. Charlie Wig. Charlie Wig. We have forum, we have a quorum. Excellent, thank you. Uh, if I could please ask everyone then to stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And under item 1.3, if any of the board members have a potential conflict of interest with uh, today's items. Hearing none, I will move to the approval of the minutes from February 22nd. Presumably everyone had a chance to review those. This is Jerry, make a motion to approve as presented. Second, Marcus Savaglio. Thank you both, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, uh, do a voice vote on this one? Or? Yeah, we could do a voice vote. Let's do a voice vote. Uh, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And with the echoes, it was very unanimous. <laughs> yes. All right, thank you. The minutes are approved. Um, item 3.1. First item today is the proposed construction of a new Popeye's restaurant at 3207. South Business Drive. And I believe the uh, presenter for that, Mark, that would be you on the phone? Uh, yeah, I represent the, uh, the developer. And I think we have James Burkhart with uh, Excel Engineering who's helping us with uh, development as well. Excellent, thank you. Uh, if one of you could just give us a brief synopsis of uh, what it is you're proposing, and then we'll take it up for discussion. Yes, yeah, so I think we purchased the lot, which was the former Ryder Truck Service Center, um, and it was quite a large lot. So we actually are in the process of splitting that into two separate lots. And on the northern half of that lot, with, which, which is roughly about, I don't know, James would have the measurements, but we want to build a freestanding Popeye's QSR restaurant um, that is, you know, illustrated in the, the slides that I guess someone has present. But... Um, but yeah, so it's it's just a, a traditional freestanding QSR with a drive-through. Okay, thank you, um, Steve. I know the city had some comments on this one. Would you review those for us, please? Sure. Um, and James or Mark, um, I think maybe before I go into the city comments maybe one of you could speak in terms of the architecture of the building, the elevation drawing that the board is considering today. So if someone wants to go through those uh, building elevations and plans, um, now would be the time to do that. Yeah, James, I'll, I'll divert to you, probably the better. Sure, um, so on the front elevation, we're, we're looking at a majority of uh, EFIS, um, along with some fiber cement wood siding, which is the, the brown material. Um, the towers would be fiber cement uh, in the form of a brick um, texture. Um, and then the rest of the, the buildings mainly EFIS as well. Okay. All right, if you want to go through some of the comments. So a couple uh, comments that staff had with regards to the project. Um, one of them was that in that particular section of um, South Business Drive, you have the Washington Square development and you have several outlets on the, outlets on the west side um, and much of that is brick. So one of the questions that staff had for the board was, the applicant's proposing um, horizontal fiber cement pattern on the front towers and portions of north and south elevations. 
um, but they show a, a, a vertical fiber cement wood pattern on the main tower element. And so the question that staff had was um, applicant might want to explain the reasoning behind that uh, design because staff is unsure about the fibers, you know, the vertical fiber cement on that uh, section. And should that same horizontal design be used to the building in order to be uniform? Um, also, should there be more brick instead of EFIS on that front south business drive elevation to be more consistent with the other development in that um, neighborhood? A couple other comments were with regards to the shutters on the north and south sides of the rear of the building, that those are presently teal in color and staff was questioning whether or not there was any reason why the shutters couldn't be a similar color to that of the trim or the awning colors located on a building similar to the other Popeyes brand orange and red accents on the building. Um, any thoughts on the freezer design? The freezer just kind of looks like it's placed at the back of the building with, uh, with a design that, that really doesn't relate to the rest of the building. Um, there are several horizontal band elements that just seem to dead end and is there any reason why these bands couldn't extend throughout the sides of the building? Um, is there any reason why the brick on the main entry south elevation where it says love that chicken could not be stepped up above the EFIS portion of, of the building similar to the building design on the drive through on the north elevation? And would the parapets just cover the mechanicals? So those were just a couple of comments that staff had that um, the board and the applicant uh, can address. And those were... Great comments, thanks, Steve. And they summarized all the thoughts I had had so nicely. I figured all it was right. easiest to run through them that right. way. Um, uh, maybe Mark and James, was it? Uh, if you want to respond to those and then have additional discussion. Yeah, I'll, I'll try to touch on a few of them and then James could probably elaborate. Um, as far as the, you had mentioned kind of the, the disparity between the horizontal uh, applications and the vertical applications. As far as the EFIS, um, I, I, there is, the only horizontal segments that I guess uh, you would reference is really the differentiation in the color of the EFIS material on the bottom portion and the top portion. Other than that, there's really not any kind of horizontal patterns that really exist. It's pretty a, a uniform application um, over the surface area. Uh, the vertical wood panelings are kind of a Nietzsche hop paneling that uh, the brand has kind of applied. Um, so I, I'm not really sure whether they have the the acceptance of want to turn those horizontal or not. It's kind of up to the design team as, at, at Popeyes specifically. Um, the freezer material, uh, we, we've gone to a, a paintable surface. Uh, of those freezer panels instead of what you a lot of times see as a galvanized steel material. Uh, we've we gravitated towards more of a, pa uh, a paintable surface, which we generally try to match the, the color of the EFIS material that's the most predominant, um, you know, that you see everywhere else. Um, they had mentioned a couple of color variations that they see in this site versus some other ones. Well, I'm not sure if you're aware, but Popeyes as a brand is going in through a re-imaging process where they're, they're transitioning the image that you're probably most familiar with into what you see here. It's a newer image. Uh, we built this same uh, model in Green Bay um, and uh, eventually over the next three to five years, a lot of the existing Popeyes that you know now will be uh, bound to re-imaging to this new design anyway. Um, so a lot of the colors that you see on shutters and such um, are going to this. I would say the only variation that we've gotten, and this is a, a newer update that we've gotten from the brand, is they've actually gone and changed those red awnings to match the same teal. Um, I, I'm not sure exactly why. I thought maybe they, they maybe they thought it was more uniform, uh, but you're actually going to see more of that teal in the awnings as well, not the red. Um, that's not reflected in these plans, but that's something that the brand has been pushing lately. Um, and so other than that, everything is pretty consistent. Um, you mentioned the love the chicken uh, emblem that's on the one elevation. Uh, I guess maybe I misunderstood with where that was proposed to be relocated. Um, but I think where it's at is really the only applicable surface because uh, the contrast of color really only stands out on that brick. If you tried to put it on an EFIS material, you wouldn't be able to see it. 
Yeah, uh, I don't, if I could interrupt there, I don't think the yes. comment was related to the location of that element. It was referencing the lack of a parapet at that point. Uh, that appears to be sort of the main entry element to the building, and yet it's getting less uh, hierarchy in treatment than any of the other uh, ancillary pieces. So it seems like it would want to draw more attention to that uh, rather than have it tie in at the same height. It would, uh, it, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, I'm not really sure. I mean, that's it's more of just a graphic. Um, the the main entrance being the double doors with the awning over it. Um, exactly. As far as the yeah, as far as the elevation of where that's placed, I'm not I'm not really sure. I mean, again, a lot of the design elements that we are bound to are more of a corporate branding. Um, design decision, not so much on our individual design um, or, you know, I don't know how much, you know, jurisdiction we have over those decisions. We can definitely, there is some ability to kind of negotiate with small variations of it when you talk about cities that, you know, have requirements in terms of brick, you know, requirements or, or other types of materials. But, I mean, if we want to propose moving the elevation of that, that art we can definitely propose it i don't see why there would be an objection to it i think no, it's the, more the issue is not moving the location of that art it's that the yeah. element that that art is on with the main entrance does not have a parapet the height of that hole is that the fake brick there dies at the yeah, same cap line as everything else whereas like your drive-through mass and the front mass are projected above with parapets uh, so, it just seems so that like wall, land. that wall that you see, is a parapet extension. So the roof line is actually below that. So, like the actual roof line is not flush with the top of what you see as a black band. So let me runs. restate that. It, it's not the parapet issue. It's the different height element for that right. entry block. Just take so a look. Just, at, just take a look at the drive-through side compared to the entry side. You'll see that the drive-through side's a little bit taller than the elevation or to the uh, 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 sections of the building to the uh, east and west of it. Yeah, uh, I don't. I don't think it is though. That drive-through side. If you're looking at that elevation, the drive-through has it's it has an extension outward. So the visual may be a little off. Um, well, but that, we're looking in elevation, so it should not be an issue of oh, perspective. Oh, you're right. No, you. I, 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 okay, I'm, I apologize. Yeah, you are correct. Um, yeah, I'm, I don't know if they just wanted some variations for the design. I don't know. Um, but as far as the difference in height of the parapet, um, I think it's more just design than it is for any structural integrity. Or, I mean, James, do you have anything to add to that? I... Yeah, from the, the corporate drawings we had received, there was nothing about the that tower on the main entrance side that was raised up. Um, but I, I understand their questioning of the tower on the drive-through side is raised up a foot, so why isn't the main entrance side raised up a foot? I I guess that, that goes back to corporate, and if they have leniency to approve that to be a, a foot higher on that main entrance side. Yeah, I would have to visit with the brand about it, but it's never been something I've ran into before. Okay, the the other elements that were brought up uh, that I'd like discussed more. Uh, first one is that the building seems disjointed to me. Uh, I don't know how the rest of the board feels, but it's a very simple boxy building, uh, but it's been broken up into a lot of separate elements that don't seem to have a lot of pieces to then uh, retie them back together again. Uh, and I'm, I'm just feeling that for me, there's too much uh, disjointedness and I would like to have things start to be better integrated. I think the comment about the awnings shifting to teal would actually start to help that, uh, that at least then some of those colors carry through more continuously. Um, but finding ways to to get the massing blocks to be a little more related would be appreciated. Uh, and I think my, my last couple of comments, and I'll turn it over to the rest of the board, the masonry aspect, um, I think, and I did drive past there just to confirm that all of the new construction down in that area really does seem to have been uh, the mostly masonry with 
you know, EFAS or fiber cement as accents, but uh, pretty predominantly everything has a masonry base, which I think is going to hold up a lot better uh, and provide a little, potentially a little more uh, uniformity to the building. So would like to see that pursued. Um, the freezer enclosure does seem very kind of tacked on and utilitarian at the back where we have been requiring for dumpster enclosures and things like the freezer enclosure to be more in keeping with the architecture and materials of the building. Um, and those, those were my hot button issues. Board, other comments or thoughts, feel free to contradict me. Uh, in, in talking with the representative from the corporation, it seems that uh, the corporate image is more important than local considerations. So I would like to consider that we reject the application until they can take a look at the local situation a little more carefully and adapt their building more carefully to the comments that have been made today. Thank you, Dick. Other comments? Mark and James, I, we've been going on a bit here. Give you guys a chance to uh, participate in the dis discussion. Your thoughts and feedback? Yeah, I would, I would definitely counter to say it. I don't think that our priority on the, the brand imaging is, is, is anywhere remotely more significant than the city's perspective by any means. So um, I don't want you guys to feel that that's our perspective. Um, we've been in the Popeye system for 20 years, so we've had the, the luxury of building in multiple jurisdictions. And so we're, we're definitely open to, to adapting discussions. And I, I have some familiarities with what the brand has been a little bit easier to negotiate with and which ones seem to be a little pressing for them. So, for example, like with the brick, I know that there's been a lot of applications where the, the grayer color EFIS that you see has been substituted for a lot more of that brick application. So then you have this contrast of brick at the base, and then you have that more of that off-white EFIS material above it. So there definitely is some, some leverages to be made with those discussions. I mean, for that matter, I've seen applications that come in and they have brick, you know, over 80% of the surface area because of the, the area of development that they went in just had a strict regulation against it. So there is some discussions that ha that can be had and there is some, some of the ability to kind of negotiate with the brand on what they will allow and what they want. Um, we're fine with any of that. As the, as the operators, we're individual franchisees, we're not stuck to the design of the brand dictated. Um, they are a brand and we are under some of their jurisdiction and so we have to kind of play nice with them. Um, but ultimately, we want a building that looks nice, and if that means changing some of the material, then we're completely open to that. Um, so I, I didn't want it to make it sound like we are anti-adaptive. You know, as the franchisee, we definitely are. Uh, we just have to kind of play around the, the red tape that the brand has. Um, being a, a, a national brand, an international brand, they, they like to you know, flex a little bit on us from time to time. But we've, we've learned to kind of play their game to some degree. Um, so we can definitely have those discussions. So, Great. I, I appreciate that. We, we certainly appreciate uh, Popeye's wanting to open up a restaurant there. We don't want to provide huge roadblocks for them. But at the same time, we want to make sure that it's consistent with the other architecture in that area. Oh, 100%. Um, and I, I think to come back and address the items that the city had included in the write-up, uh, I know that uh, staff with the city would be more than happy to, to work with you moving forward. Um, so, Dick, was your comment a motion or just a comment? You're all set to go. Oh, okay. Uh, my comment was not a motion. It was a observation that the uh, representative seems to be a little hesitant to consider any change, and I think his last comment indicates that they would be willing. So I would be willing to make a motion that we table the application until they can resubmit the drawings to be more consistent with what the comments were today. 
Great, thank you. We have a motion. Do we have a second for that motion? Second. Second. We have two seconds. Not sure who won that one. Uh, any further discussion? So I, uh, just so so the applicants are aware, so what they're talking about is just tabling this matter and that you would work with staff on just updating the drawings and then have those resubmitted for next meeting for the board to uh, reconsider. And I can obviously work with you guys in terms of some of those comments. Yeah, James, do you have a pretty good understanding of what uh, adjustments they'd like to see? Yeah, I believe so. Okay. So any additional discussion from the board? Hearing none, Steve, if you could run us through the roll call votes. And let's just do an aye or a nay. So we just have to run through one. And this is the table for now. Um, Joe Clark? Aye. Marcus Savaglio? Aye. Jerry Jones? Aye. Richard Lindy? Aye. And Charlie Wig? Aye. All right, thank you all very much. And uh, I, I guess I can, if Steve, I can, please. Uh, James and Mark, what we can do is this is Steve Sokolowski speaking, just kind of like what we've done to get to this point. Um, if we need to talk a little bit about some of the comments and then just updating dr the drawings, we'll get that done together and we'll get that back here and get that approved. Okay, it sounds good. Okay, thank you very much. And then much. we'll see you guys tomorrow. That brings us to item 3.2, the proposed exterior remodel of the Verlo tenant space at 30, sorry, 4315 South Taylor Drive. If you could introduce yourself and give us a little summary of your project, please. Uh, is this on? Okay. Yep. Um, my name is Tim Fedig. I am the franchisee of the Verlo Mattress Factory Store in Manitowoc in Sheboygan, Wisconsin. Um, we've been in Sheboygan since 1998. Uh, in two other uh, different locations. And uh, so I'm here today. Uh, we're looking at relocating um, probably for the last time in Sheboygan here. And uh, we have a new sign requirement by our franchisor that um, we'd like to be able to apply to the new space if possible. Okay. So Go ahead. So, so Tim and I have been speaking a little bit with regards to um, his proposal. Um, Verlo will be coming to the plan commission tomorrow for a use. And one of the things that they're taking a look at is the uh, signage and the front of the building. And really the questions that come as a result of that is how it relates to the, the new portion of the building. Nice materials as a standalone you know, uh, entrance in a standalone building look would probably look great. It does probably look very good. Um, but the questions that we had is just how does it relate to the rest of the building, which is going to be, you know, much different in appearance. So I know Tim might have some comments on that, both from himself and from an owner perspective of the building. But that was probably the comments, and we haven't gotten that information back yet. Did Tim, okay. give you a chance to respond there. Yeah, that's that's great. Um, so when we originally were looking at this location, we brought the elevations that you saw uh, in our brand standards manual that show it, it's actually a, a very neat panel system. Because what we found is a lot of times in buildings when we do our individual letters, um, it was very difficult to we had to drill a lot of holes through the building in order to put up uh, our individual lettered signs. That are LED lit. So what we, uh, what the, our corporate came up with is, if we put a facade of some sort, we can then reduce the number of penetrations we needed to. So that even if we're in uh, in a shopping mall or in a center, we would be enhancing the look of the property, not detracting from it. And so I showed this to the building owners, the people who own the building that we're renting from, and uh, they loved it. They thought it looked great. They thought as long as it was okay with the architectural board and we could get the approval that it would enhance the look of the building. It is an end cap, so it is 
while not freestanding, it isn't like um, it's at the far end, uh, south end of that building, and everyone just, while we were standing there looking at it, thought it would enhance the way that the building looks. Um, and that, so it, it does make it stand out a little bit differently. Um, and Verlo is just kind of a, a different little animal, I guess, is the best way to explain it. Great. I, I think the comments are all right on track. And as a design element, in and of itself, it's a nice piece. I think the issue is just how does it relate to that overall form? You know, there are some arches to the building yep. um, that this piece just doesn't seem to relate to those. Uh, and I'm not sure how it would be adjusted to do that. But I think sympathetically, it architecturally could be set up as sort of a standalone piece that feels more in keeping with the rest of the facade. Yeah, I think it, I think you're right. It doesn't. Um, there's there's always a, a flow and then a on a complement. And so when we were kind of looking at it, we were looking at it more of a complementary type addition uh, for the facade rather than a flow. Because yes, there's there's like four archways in the building which denote kind of entry spaces. So it totally, um, and the, so our thoughts with the building owners and with the sign company um, were that this would complement that space in a way that wouldn't necessarily be offensive uh, from a design perspective. Yeah, sorry, just pulling up the yeah, building photos to, uh, here for you. make uh, sure I'm remembering it properly. I asked the sign company, I wanted to get bigger um, rendering of it on, Steve and I had talked about showing a rendering it on the whole, um, like show the whole building with, there, there we go, showing the rendering with it just over uh, that doorway right there, exactly. There's actually a, a, a three-dimensional drop back right behind that tree and we would be going to that, that where that break in the wall is and then just surrounding our entrance. So it basically go across and it wouldn't even be that high. It's actually going to be just the height of where the sign is right there, You're like just right there. So it'll go across and it'll have the combination of the wood uh, surfaces, which is a, a reserve white. It's actually a citadel envelope is what they call it. Um, so that would go right over where you see the Diamond Vogel sign. It would come down uh, between the two entrance ways and then over that first set of windows. Yep, right there. So you'd have the, the white uh, citadel material and then you'd have cedar siding, which would again, um, kind of you can see in the drawing there. Uh, we have not making an application to paint everything blue. We, we didn't want to do that. The building owner didn't care. He said if, if we wanted to, we could, but we just at this point, I just think using the facade for our individual lettering and then enhancing that little end cap um, would be a great way to, to approach it. Yeah, I think one of the challenges that we'll be facing you, let's see if you could bring up that street view again, the arched elements, yeah. and I remember this coming up when this building was first approved. Want it closer? Uh, no, this is fine. Um, with the paired entries under the arch to then put any differentiation to either of those okay. starts to really minimize the other. Um, so as I would be hoping for a way that your elements and the materials, which are great, could get incorporated in a way that, that does what you're looking for, for that branding for your piece of the building but is done in a way that's sympathetic enough to the architecture of the building as a whole, okay. that it doesn't feel like it's fighting against it, and make the, the entry immediately next to it that shares that arched yeah. uh, entry piece feel sort of second class, um, even though you're dressing yours up a lot. Um, how to do that, I don't know. <laughs> um, <laughs> I was just going to ask that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, I, I think as an architectural design challenge, there's there's an answer there. I'm not sure what it is, okay. Uh, but I would uh, love to see you work with your your corporate folks or or an architect to come up with a, a okay. solution for that. If we if we made, um, I was out there with the sign company, and we're going to have to do something in front, like where Diamond Vogel sign is, and even Parker Kirkland, they actually their signs are on something else. Um, so if I, 
if I can't make it as big as this, would I be able to maybe to use a, a portion of the white and a portion of the wood mostly just at the sign height instead of coming all the way down to the ground? Would that be a reasonable? And I would have, I, I don't think we're gonna be able to make a decision today really, so I would have better drawings and, and renderings for you at the next meeting if that's something that you thought was possible. Right, I, I think that sounds great. Um, if you're talking about taking some of those material elements and using them up more as a sort of sign piece rather than that architecturally grounded surround, yeah. that might help you. Okay, um, okay. The, the building, more. Well, the building was set up that it, it really was intended, I think, to work with just you know blocks of signage to differentiate where the different tenants went. Yeah. Um, and the introduction of that extra architectural piece, while as a, as a piece it's really nice, it's yeah. how does it integrate with the rest of it. I understand. Um, hard to say yes or no without a visual to see. Yes. Um, I think there are a number of solutions that could work there. Okay. Um, but your folks may need to get a little creative to make that all yeah. come together. Franchisors, we, I, I was listening to the Popeye discussion and I thought, while wow, franchisors are not super flexible entities. Um, but yes, as franchisees, we're always flexible. <laughs> we we want to serve customers, we, wanna, we love our community, and we want to serve our community. So um, I'm sure we'll come up with a really good Great. A plan. And we certainly appreciate the branding element and the, the corporate identity that needs to be maintained. Yeah. Um, but it, it seems that creative architecture can usually take that and, and work it into uh, its yep. surroundings so they're all complementary. That'll be perfect. So based on that, it sounds as if uh, we're probably looking to table this one also to come back to a subsequent meeting, but I'm feeling I've monopolized the conversation here as usual. So other <laughs> board members, uh, other comments or concerns? Marcus Savaglio, I'd make a motion to hold this. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Okay. Can I ask one question? Steve. Um, when we look at kind of like these drawings, when we look at these drawings, um, is this something, you know, because you see the wood and the sign, Does is that something that works over this section? Or, you know, um, in that, just that little bit? Or I'm not, you know... Um, between the windows, and I, I'm not. I'm not sure. Um, I guess he just needs to bring a couple things back, and we can look at them. Huh? Just yeah. trying to figure out what how this works. I, I think one of the issues that, you know, as I play designer in my head, what might I do? That arch that mm -hmm. you're fighting with above. Mm -hmm. Is there some way to at least reference that? Uh, maybe it's like a curved way. Like maybe some it's way taking to your curve and running the, it the other way. Uh, yeah, that or, I don't. I don't know. Yeah, well, that, like I was looking at, like at per, at Parker, that black piece that's behind the Parker Kirkwood sign. Um, it's kind of it's kind of backlit. It glows back into the black. So the way I kind of was, if we're gonna cut, you know, minimize it, what I thought is maybe we have two of the upright or three of the upright white pieces, um, and then some of the cedar just to the right side of that integrated so that it isn't much bigger than the Parker Kirkland sign uh, as far as visual looks. And we have some of the branding elements, so that would still be attractive. Um, and then we have a way to do the electrical, and we're not interfering with the arches. At least that's, after listening to you today, I think that that might be, a reasonable solution where instead of having them go full blown and trying to go all the way to the ground and try to incorporate some sort of half arch, I think that would be hard because I don't know what these, mater these materials, I've only seen them. I've never really touched them or felt them. My guess is the cedar siding would be very hard to bow. And I think the metal, those, um, those citadel panels are also metal. So I don't think they would be yeah. I mean, I'm going to have the architect look at it and come up with some, I'm going to tell him what we talked about today and show him the building and say, here's where the door ends, that we've got half an arch there. How do we complement that without minimizing our neighbors? Right. And see what his thoughts are, but my thoughts are, let's, simpler is easier. I heard Steve say that. I agree. Yeah. 
Um, so, and we understand you have a budget to work with in too. <laughs> Actually, yes, my wife said, um, why don't we just put the sign up like Steve said? <laughs> 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 Sorry. Yeah, and, and, and you know, and maybe and maybe there's some uh, pieces like you said that are the backdrop pieces that get those elements in yeah. there. Yeah. Great. I, I think that's all. You're certainly hearing what we're we're saying. Yeah, it absolutely. sounds as if uh, moving forward, you'll be looking at design elements that then we can okay. uh, review in more detail. Um, any additional discussion uh, or comments from the board? Otherwise, Steve, if you could run us through the roll on the motion to uh, it was to table right. for a future meeting. Joe Clark, aye. Marcus Savaglio, aye. Jerry Jones, aye. Richard Lindy, aye. Charlie Wig. Charlie Wig. Hello? Uh, we're uh, made a motion to table the Verlo um, request, Charlie. I heard it all. I said I. So okay. Thank you. you did. Yep. Did, thank uh, you. All right. That uh, passes then. Thank you very much. And uh, thank you, guys. Tim, we'll look forward to seeing you, you come back. And then we'll see you tomorrow, too. We'll see you tomorrow. Okay. Sounds awesome. good. Awesome. Thank Excellent. you, guys. Uh, looks as if our next meeting is scheduled for the 12th. And based on tonight's meeting, we'll definitely be having one on that night. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, if there are no other comments or concerns from the board, I entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Do we second. have a second? And voice vote on that. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? No one is opposing to adjourning. So we are adjourned. Thank you all very much. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye.